my website right now and download my free course on alternate picking mastery. It contains five essential exercises that will take you to alternate picking mastery faster than you can imagine. And then I've included my method of how to lay out a practice plan in just one to two minutes that will absolutely boost your results like nothing you ever tried before. So go download it right now. It's free. I've created a video some time ago that was called How to Learn Scale Shapes Five Times Faster. See if you can remember uh, to include a link. And if not, please just go search the channel, uh, How to Learn Scale Shapes Five Times Faster. And it's all about the trick that uh, the brain plays on us, where we learn in a sequence, or we learn as a 3D pattern, visual pattern. And there's a huge difference between it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you actually practice your way into becoming worse than instead of better. Let's say you're practicing a couple of chords, right? You're practicing the C major, just to start where you know, most people have been or are at the moment. You're practicing the C major, open string chord, and the G. And you practice them back and forth. That's really cool, right? Uh, and, and you become very good at it. The second you have to play that C major chord or that G in another context. Your fingers are coming from a different position, right? So let, let me say, say I practice the C major chord with the D major chord. It's a totally different shift. It's a totally different little trip that each finger has to travel in order to get from the C to the D instead of the G to the C. And so we get confused. We say, okay, I thought I knew how to do the C. And suddenly now that it's in a different context, I don't. That's because the, the brain has stored the C and the G as a little sequence. I go from this to there, this to there, right? Back and forth, back and forth. Each finger is traveling the same distance each and every time. And we don't see that. So we, I think I'm learning a C major and I'm learning a G. I am, but I'm also programming the brain with those specific movements. And we have to be very conscious about the fact that once you, you know, play them in a different context, it's a new thing. Don't get frustrated. Just know that it's, that's how it is. So you have to combine the C with every other possible combination of chords, right? Go from an F with, with a bar to a C, F. And at some point, once you combine the C with the D and the C with the F and the C with the E and, you know, at some point, your fingers get that flexibility like it's easier. That's what mastery does. It's easier to combine other chords. So the better you are at combining two chords and then combining the same chord with another chord, then gradually you develop the, the ability to learn to move your fingers in different combinations so you learn even faster all the time. When it comes to scales, the same thing happens, but even worse, because often we play scales up and down. And we think that's a cool way of learning it, but it's the most, it's the, it's the least effective because we're learning things, we're learning little movements as a sequence, like the alphabet, that's what I talk about in the video. You learn the alphabet. I could ask you, could you name the 10th letter in the alphabet? And 99.999% of all people have to count from the A into the 10th, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and so on, right? Until you reach the 10th letter. And so you can't name it because it's not visual. So instead of standing in a room where you can see all the letters, and then I say, name the 10th, and you close your eyes and you say, it's there, right? Imagine that, that you actually have the whole image, like you actually have the whole picture of the scale laid out. You can see the dots on the fretboard. You can just, right? And, then, and so you can go horizontal on the, on the, on the G string because you can see the notes there and you can go vertical in any position. It's all laid out, right? It's a visual. Then instead of doing that, instead of learning scales like that, we learn them as a sequence of movements and notes. So in order to figure out what happens on the G string, you have to start on the E. And that's what comes out of practicing scales up and down like that. Instead, you must go. Right? You must mess with the notes and play them in different orders. So you force your brain to learn the pattern, the visual pattern, instead of a sequence of little movements like an alphabet. 
How would you, just an example, how would you learn the alphabet if I told you you have to be able to name the sixth, the tenth, the twentieth letter in the alphabet? You would have to learn it as an image. And that's actually what people who are extremely good at learning huge amount of information is good at. Once heard from a guy who's able to, you know, remember thousands of letters, like the phone book, right? Like several pages of the phone book. And the way he did it was like he imagined a landscape of hills. And then the the different information was placed in different places on that on that hill. And then he could simply close his eyes and say, there, there. Like he was standing in a room. If you can do that now. So just go into your living room in your mind and then tell me where everything is. You can turn around and say, that's my bed, that's the cupboard, and in the cupboard, if you open it, I can see where I put my pants, where I, everything. It's all visual. It's not sequential, right? And that's the main point here. So you have to always remember, remember if you're learning chords, if you're learning scales, if you're learning anything, am I storing this as a sequence right now? Could I go in the middle and tell me what's there or not? Or do I need to mess with it? Do I need to force my brain to not play scales up and down endlessly, but instead go, ba, okay. If you can't do this, pick random notes on any string in any um, shape here, then it means that you've probably stored them sequentially. And the cool thing is, Learning scales like this enables you to go around visualizing scale shapes in your head, right? So you actually see the pattern on the fretboard. You look down in your mind on the fretboard, and then you do everything you can to visualize that shape. And if you can't do that, you're simply taking on too much at one time. So you could pick just the, the, the top three strings, uh, A minor scale, for instance, and then learn that first when you can look at the fretboard, go up and down. And mess with the notes, play them up and down, close your eyes, visualize, look at the fretboard, play it, visualize, play it, visualize, until it stuck, sticks in your mind. And then when you go to work, you drive in your car, you can just visualize, okay, visualize again, visualize, go back and forth, back and forth. And then you can add new patterns and learn scale shapes without your instrument all day. It really works like magic. So just a little add on to the old video who has a lot of comments and a lot of people who don't understand what I mean because I'm perhaps not explaining it very accurately. So go watch that video right now. Uh, how to learn scale shapes five times, five times faster. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it, do it now, do it.